Hello and welcome. I'm Scott Dennis. Thanks so much for joining us. Our top story today at noon happening right now. Sarasota residents are meeting for the second time this week on a hot topic on the Sun Coast, the revitalization of a section of Sarasota's Bayfront, the subject of today's meeting. ABC 7's Marla Spence is at that open community session right now with more. Marla. Yeah, it's one busy and packed house inside the Van Wazel right behind me. Sarasota County residents are inside taking a peek at what could possibly become a 53 acres of the bay. Now, today is the second day of a meeting that's hosted right here at Van Wazel, and this is becoming after four years of discussions and planning of this redevelopment. So far, there's no word yet on what will become of the area. What we do know is that there are 36 possible options and ideas for the Bay. For those wondering, the revitalization could possibly mean waterfront dining and boutique shops, which could possibly bring in more jobs here on the Sun Coast. And there's also the possibility of a new Van Wazel building, a parking, a park actually, and a green space. But one thing we've heard loud and clear from the community that we've talked to already is really this desire for park and open space and green space on this extraordinary 53 acre site on the waterfront. And so we'll be looking for ways of ensuring that there's still great parking and access to whatever amenities are here, but also meeting this need that we hear about a destination open space that really is the common ground for this community. The park and green space would actually replace the parking lot here at the Bayfront Park. Also, the, the development that is asking people throughout the community to come out. They're asking people from all over Sarasota County to put in their input because the new park as well as the new uh, green space or whatever is to become of the, 50, of the 53 acres that will be public space and also open to the public. Reporting live for ABC 7, I'm Marla Spence. Back to you guys. All right, Marla, thank you. New developments involving medical marijuana dispensaries in the city of Sarasota. City commissioners unanimously agreeing to allow those dispensaries within city limits. The decision comes just seven months after commissioners passed a temporary ban on those dispensaries. Governor Rick Scott signed a bill that said local governments had to either allow the same zoning laws for dispensaries as traditional pharmacies or ban all of them. Temporary ban was enacted in order to create a plan that would be accepted citywide, and now 20 pharmacies that already exist in the city will be able to dispense medical marijuana. After today, Governor Scott will be in Sarasota highlighting job growth. The governor will make a stop at a small business called Rapid Composites. Around 5 o'clock this afternoon, that company designs, engineers, and manufactures software equipment for law enforcement and the military. According to the governor's office, since December of 2010, Florida businesses have created nearly one and a half million jobs. Nine projects in Florida will receive $35 million from the Florida Job Growth Grant Fund. Cities and counties will be able to put that money towards construction, water supply, fire protection, which is expected to lead to economic development. The governor's recommended budget for next fiscal year includes $85 million for that fund. Sarasota City Parking Manager says he's received no complaints about the new long-term parking fee in downtown parking garages. ABC 7's Ray Collins joins us now with an update. Ray? Scott, some downtown workers told us they don't like having to pay to park in the garage now, but the city says they've heard no complaints. So you won't be able to breeze into the garage like you used to as fast as you could. It didn't take long for cars, in fact, to back up in line while we were there this morning. So now you pull up and uh, take a ticket from the machine right there. And when you leave later, you put the ticket back in. As long as the ticket shows you are less than three hours there, you'll leave for free. Otherwise, you'll have to use your credit card. There are no tellers present. The parking manager says this is a user fee rather than charge all taxpayers for the garage. Anyone coming downtown understands that, you know, it's a big building. It's got to be maintained. There's lights, there's equipment, there's cleaning, things of that nature. And all these uh, revenues go back to uh, the budget that help main maintains all that. So you pay three dollars after three hours, and a dollar more per hour, topping out at twenty-three dollars for the entire day. And there is also no overnight parking. Scott. All right. Thank you so much, Ray. Bradenton police receiving more money from the state to help keep pedestrians and bicycle riders safe. The department is receiving grant money for its high visibility enforcement program. The grant will allow the department to post officers at four busy intersections. It's hoped the increased patrols will decrease the number of pedestrian, bicycle, and car crashes. SpaceX still celebrating a successful launch of the world's most powerful rocket. 
The Falcon Heavy blasting off from Cape Canaveral yesterday afternoon on its first test flight. It's been described as the most powerful rocket since NASA's Saturn V, capable of producing 5 million pounds of thrust or the equivalent of 20 jetliners all at once. New reports say SpaceX overshot its original trajectory and is now pushing the Tesla Roadster that it's been in orbit into an orbit extending into the asteroid belt between Mars and Jupiter. John, I was simply uh, awestruck <laughs> watching all of this yesterday. Um, first, the launch was amazing. Yes. And then to see those two rockets yeah. come back down and land. Amazing and, stuff. And sonic booms on the way down. It's just phenomenal. Uh, How they and then the view last night from, from the, Star the Tesla Roadster yeah. in Starman. It's just uh, incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And it was, it's fun, too, to watch the difference in coverage between uh, the Tesla web stream or the, uh, the, the SpaceX web stream yeah. and uh, NASA TV and the different kind of <laughs> characterization yeah. of the, the crowd. It's just, it was awesome. You know, we're back in the game, and I think, yeah. you know, yeah. which and, is fantastic. And that you could just hear the enthusiasm of those who were there to watch. <laughs> Completely. Yeah. It, was, it was like a uh, cheering football yeah. crowd there. It was great. Oh. So neat. Uh, the sky looks beautiful outside right now. We started off the morning with a little bit of patchy fog, but it wasn't too terribly bad. I think tomorrow we have a better chance of seeing some thicker fog. We'll be talking about that in a few minutes. Blue sky out there, peppered with a few fair weather clouds this afternoon and some warm temperatures. Once again, with temperatures climbing up near the 80 degree mark, we'll look for a little bit of cloud cover. But, you know, not a whole lot. Not as much as we saw around yesterday. Uh, we are looking at temperatures already that have cracked the 80 mark in many locations. 81 degrees in Sarasota, 78 degrees Lakewood Ranch, 78 in Parrish, Bradenton at 78, 78 in Mayaka, Northport coming in at 78. All of these temperatures leading to a daytime high that will take us well above average. We'll have the complete forecast, including the potential of some rainfall, coming up in just a few. Scott? All right, John, thank you. Happening in Florida, crews are scrambling to try and keep a huge hole from growing in Citrus Park. A giant 15-foot wide by 4-foot deep hole opened up early this morning in a woman's front yard, apparently created by a water main break. There are no evacuations right now, but water was shut off to about 14 homes in that neighborhood. Crews are now assessing the hole and are working to stabilize it to make sure it doesn't get any bigger. Well, if you're looking for your happily ever after, you may want to just to stay here in Florida. Wallet Hub ranking the Sunshine State as the second best overall for singles just in time for Valentine's Day. Florida ranked third for dating opportunities, romance, and fun, and gained a number one spot for restaurants. Per capita. Well, it's the most prestigious dog show of the year, and it's taking place this weekend. ABC 7 Stephanie Webb joins us now with a local connection to the Westminster Dog Show. Hey, Stephanie. Well, New York City has gone to the dogs. The Westminster Dog Show officially kicks off this weekend. Over 2,000 dogs representing around 209 different breeds will all be competing for top dog or best in show. Groups include sporting dogs, working dogs, terriers, toy dogs, and many more. Sarasota resident Kiki Khan has been a judge in the annual competition since 1972. Perfect. You have to know the standards. You have to be, like any other job, you have to treat people nicely because everybody can't win. So therefore, you're a pretty good psychiatrist <laughs> or try to be, and that's the way it goes. You just do your best. It's exciting. It's fun. It's one of a kind. It, to even win a breed at Westminster is a, a big, big deal. And that annual competition kicks off Saturday with Agility Championships. Then Monday and Tuesday, all the breeds will be competing for Best in Show. Must see for dog lovers, for sure. Thank you, Stephanie. Still to come in your Suncoast News, a shocking report claiming nursing homes are over-medicating people who are suffering from dementia. And how a California city's new mayor is breaking barriers for people with disabilities. You know, fortunately, this was my first job out of college, so I was able to uh, come back home and work in my hometown. I wore two hats. I was sports director and I was a news anchor. Uh, I did that for a few years and then decided to go full-time into news. Well, I love our team here at ABC7. We have a great mix, and it really is a great mix of, of personalities, of experience, that meshes really well into a really strong team. I'm Scott Dennis, and I'm here for you. 
Need more space in your place? The More Space Place can help with Murphy beds that disappear to reveal a home office, living room, or den. Custom closets with designated areas for your shoes, bags, wardrobe, and accessories. Custom built entertainment centers, garage storage systems, and more. The More Space Place has three showrooms next to Sunny's on US 41 South in Sarasota, on Lakewood Ranch Boulevard just south of State Route 64 in Bradenton, and on Tamiami Trail next to Panera Bread in Port Charlotte. Put more space in your place at the More Space Place. So Matt told me to meet him at 7 a.m. sharp right here. It is now 7.01 a.m. You think Matt would leave without me? Hey, is Matt here? Uh, long con. Long con. Just missed him. Just missed him. All done. Mr. Sparky guarantees they're on time and the repair is free, so chop, chop. Call 888 sparky Matt, you started without me. I finished without you, too. Everyone likes the 2018 Honda Civic. For $169 a month, you made Civic a best-selling compact car in America. You'll like Civic's five-star safety ratings and the KBB.com name Civic a best buy and the most awarded car. Get the 2018 Civic at a payment you love. $169 a month today at your local Honda dealer. Honda, I like it. Oh, yeah, I like it. I actually started playing the game at 11 years old, so I started a little bit later than most players. But I was actually raised on Fighting Joe. The value here at Robert Trent Jones is unsurpassable. I mean, I have looked to other places. I've traveled all the way across the country. Everything is perfect as far as everything is the golf course, the rolling of the greens. Everything that I've encountered has just been absolutely incredible. And for the money that you spend, for the value that you actually get, it is unsurpassable. I'd recommend it for anybody. Download the all-new ABC7 First Alert weather app now. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. So current conditions outside are looking pretty good. We have, generally speaking, a sunny sky out there. And we will continue to watch our temperatures rise as we head into the afternoon. Currently, we've already broken the 80 degree mark in many, many locations, including Sarasota at 81 degrees. With full sunshine out there, no reason we can't get to about 83 for a daytime high. Dew point is at 65. We have a south wind continuing to blow at 3. Now, one of the keys, I think, to the forecast over the next 24 hours is going to be the development of some sea fog, which if we take this south wind and turn it a little bit more to the southwest, we are likely to push some of that sea fog closer to the coast. And I think we may well do that tomorrow morning around drive time. We'll be watching the winds shift once again to a more northerly direction, which could blow some of that sea fog back away from the coast. So timing is everything in this forecast and fog forecasting is a, is a difficult thing at best. So we'll wait and see how it develops, but that potential does exist because of the winds. 83 degrees by 3 p.m., 70 by 7 p.m., by midnight, 66 degrees, and we'll probably start to see some of that fog forming around midnight and gradually drifting back toward the coast. Then about 7 a.m. with a 65 degree temperature, may well start to see some of that fog being pushed back away from the coast. Watch the future cast. We'll put it hour by hour. A mix of sun and fair weather clouds today. Some fog forming out in the coast by the evening hours and then getting pushed a little bit further onshore as we head into the wee hours of the morning. And tomorrow morning, possibly, we'll start to see some of that fog be a kind of limiting factor in uh, the visibilities for drive time tomorrow morning. We'll also have a few scattered showers around, and those scattered showers are going to be caused by a frontal boundary that will slowly be sinking southward and falling apart as it does, so leading to some unsettled weather tomorrow, I guess you could say. There'll be plenty of sunshine around, but there'll also be a fair amount of cloud cover as well. There's our front right now, the frontal boundary itself producing some snow showers in upstate New York, Pennsylvania, Ohio, and rain showers back further down toward the Atlanta area today. The whole frontal boundary pushed south begins to weaken as the energy lifts off to the north, and we are left with uh, kind of a decaying frontal boundary that brings us a chance at a scattered shower too. Not a big one. South wind turning to the southwest at about five knots, looking for two foot seas and a light chop. And the forecast looks like this. We'll have a daytime high today of around 83. Tomorrow about 81. A few more clouds around. 20% chance of an isolated sprinkle or shower. And then over the next several days, nice weather. 
And even with the front coming through, we won't cool all that much. On Sunday, about a 30% chance of showers, but that increases as the front stalls over us on Monday and leads to more unsettled weather. But again, none of these fronts really lowering our temperature all that much. Scott? All right, John, thank you. In HealthSmart, a shocking new report from Human Rights Watch claims nursing homes are over-medicating people with dementia. Melissa Rainey breaks down the findings. A 157-page Human Rights Watch report estimates nursing homes are giving more than 179,000 residents antipsychotic medications without the proper diagnosis. Most of these people are older and have dementia. Researchers say facilities use the drug as a cost-effective chemical restraint to help overwhelmed staff. Antipsychotic drugs are FDA-approved for the treatment of psychosis, and they're used in nursing homes not to treat psychosis, but to keep people with dementia quiet and manageable. The FDA says the drugs can almost double the risk of death in these patients. The report blames the government for lack of oversight. The Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services launched an initiative to combat the issue back in 2012. They say the effort reduced the use of antipsychotic drugs by 35 percent, but agree that more can be done. The Human Rights Watch report suggests alternative treatments like reducing loneliness and creating routines. For today's Health Minute, I'm Melissa Rainey. Well, in the third show of the uh, Florida Studio Theater season, we have John Thomas Waite starring in Native Gardens. <laughs> Thanks for coming in today, Thanks sir. Thanks for having us in here. This sounds like a fascinating play. It's, a, it's um, about kind of established old upper crust society meeting with a new society, yes. right? It's really about uh, preconceptions, uh, what we, we expect from uh, other other people uh -huh. uh, because we have a staid older couple and a new young family moves in next door in a uh, very staid neighborhood in Georgetown, Washington, D.C. And, and those neighborhoods still exist today? They certainly, <laughs> they certainly do. Certainly, I lived yeah. in Washington for a while yeah. and, and I knew my character. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd been to cocktail parties with uh, the character I play many times. And so, so, uh, so what happened? Do, do both couples, they're, they're, both husband and wife couples evolve? Yes. They share uh, a fence, it, right? It, 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 it is a play about a fence and where it should be and where it shouldn't be. Uh, and about a formal garden and a native garden. Two different ideas of what you should be planting. But I have uh, to assume that that fence is just a metaphor for something. Yes, it is. It, it, it is a metaphor. Uh, it's a very funny show. It's very well written. Karen Zacharias is the author. Uh, it's a wonderful play. Uh, very funny, but it has a lot to tell us. So you laugh a lot, and then you go out sort of thinking about, oh, maybe I'm a little like this character. Well, uh, I was very impressed with your background and credentials, I have to say. You've been on Broadway. <laughs> yes, you've done a, a, a lot <laughs> of a really big show. So we're lucky to have you here, I well, think. I'm and, uh, having a really good time down oh, here. Oh, that's good It's been hear. 30 years since I've been down in the area, so uh, this is, you know, wonderful to get back down to Florida. Well, it's good to have you here. Uh, Native Gardens uh, opened now. It's a, it's a, in, in on stage right now at the Florida Studio Theater. Plays through March, is that March, March 25th. Sounds okay. like a really fun show. It is, so please come down and see us. Uh, let's jump over to Judy and see what's going on in the kitchen. Hey, Judy. Hi there. Well, I have a really hearty recipe today that's going to be perfect when that rain does follow in a little bit. We're going to brine some pork chops, and we're making the whole dish into as simplest form as you can. Not everybody wants to go home and have to prepare risotto, which takes like non-stop cooking in your attention. So we're gonna use an Alessi brand of saffron risotto. You'll notice that saffron risotto is really trending in restaurants. It brings a really nice flavor to the dish and by getting it this way, you're not spending as much on the saffron threads. We're gonna do a sheet pan roast of vegetables, shiitakes and portobellos, parsnips and carrots. We're gonna sprinkle that with some Moroccan seasoning. I'll show you the marinade and then we'll all bring it together with a little blood orange sauce. So stay with me throughout the hour. It's seasoned pork chops Moroccan style. Accolades are great. Just wait until you see our prices. Rugs as Art, Sarasota's only area rug superstore. 
Thanks to the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society, what was once impossible is happening today for thousands of patients with blood cancer. I live. I live. I live. I live. I live. She lives. Because of the research done by the Leukemia and Lymphoma Society in the battle against blood cancer. If you had a chance to support the research that is saving lives, what would you do? About every three minutes in America, someone is diagnosed with a blood cancer. Light the Night brings together survivors and supporters to bring light to the darkness of cancer and to help fund life-saving research. Our goal is a world without blood cancers, and we're lighting the path to cures. The discoveries made in blood cancer research have led to breakthrough treatments for many cancers and other serious diseases. Help defeat the darkness of cancer. Join Light the Night today. Okay, so we drowned the fire, yep. stirred it, mm -hmm. drowned it again, mm -hmm. and now just feel if it's cold. Yeah. Cool. Smokey just gave me a bear hug. I know. I already posted it. Check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com for Chef Judy's favorite recipes, restaurant guide, and more. Go to MySuncoast.com slash dining. A woman is not just the youngest in the city's history, she's also breaking records for people with disabilities. Sarah Zendanam has her story. If you didn't know, she's the first deaf female mayor in the United States and the youngest mayor of an angel's camp. Pretty impressive, huh? Destiny. This is Amanda Destiny. Fallendorf. She's 31 years old, lost her hearing as a baby, and is making history. It was an honor to be seen in that leadership role. Fallendorf wanted to sign through this interview to show the value of American Sign Language and that her hearing won't stop her. I see it as my, my my superpower. I, I think it's a wonderful thing to, to use. But superpowers don't protect her from everything. She says people have their doubts because of her age. It takes a lot of confidence to stand up in front of those, those people and say, yes, I can. And faces challenges to keep up with her hearing. But Fallendorf has two interpreters at meetings. That helps and allows her to bring her unique perspective to Angel's camp. Oh, you guys shut up? Fallendorf was elected to city council at just 27 years old. Four years later, she's the leader of this small town. Her priorities? Economic growth and viability through preserving the history of this area. And as the youngest mayor this town has ever seen, she wants to include the younger generation's voice in that. Their ideas and um, their family are going to be, be here for, for a long time and show the deaf community greatness is possible. We can do everything else hearing people can do. But just can't hear. <laughs> In Angel's Camp, Sarah Zendanam. Great story. Let's get back over to the kitchen now and check in again with Judy Gallagher. Hi, Judy. Hi there, Scott. So what I'm going to do now just to get them roasted in time, we'll start with the vegetables. I peeled up some parsnips, some shiitake mushrooms, green beans, you can use hair couvert, which are the skinny French green beans, olive oil, organic carrots. This is gonna go in the oven with some fresh thyme and it has that Moroccan seasoning and olive oil on it. So we'll give that a roast at 400 degrees for about 25 minutes. Mushrooms will be done sooner than them. Let's talk about the brine. Brining pork chops makes them so juicy and succulent, so I really want you to get used to doing this. What I do is I basically make the brine, then I bring it to a boil, 
cool it down, then add some ice, and then it goes in a bag with the pork chops. I picked up these beautiful center cut thick pork chops. I really like this because this is like the porterhouse of pork chops. So you get the little tenderloin on that side. Nice and big. One per person is going to be great. When you make the marinade, I use apple cider. I just find that I like the flavor no matter how I'm mixing it with like the blood oranges I've got in there. Then we're going to do brown sugar and we're going to do salt. You do a fair amount of salt because what you're going to do, that's about a half a cup of brown sugar and the kosher salt. The kosher salt, you're going to bring this all to a boil and then when it cools down what you're going to do is you're going to add ice cubes and that will break it all down you never want to add the pork until this is chilled down so this will go in a pot come to a boil then just simmer almost steep for about 20 minutes then we'll cool it down it's going to go overnight and what i do is just a pinch of dry mustard powder as well is always nice to add into that. I don't want to use the Moroccan seasoning just yet because that will be almost too intense. When it comes out of the marinade the next day, you want to rinse it in cold water, pat it dry, and then seasoning. Then what we're going to do is just take a, just a teeny bit of olive oil right on the pork chop. You know, when you're cooking boneless pork chops, be careful because there isn't a lot of fat to them at all, so you're not going to get that that, that fat rendering in the pan, so you'll need more oil. But let's get these two started. And you can see I patted the other side and added some of that Moroccan seasoning. When we come back, we'll get the risotto going, we'll check on the vegetables, and we'll bring it all together with some blood orange sauce. It's Greek time! February 8th through the 11th at the 34th annual St. Barbara Greek Festival. Bring your family and friends. Treat yourself to authentic Greek home cooking and pastries. Plus, dance to traditional Greek music. Visit a marketplace filled with crafts and jewelry from local artisans. Children will enjoy the kids' zone and everyone will have a good time. Bring your appetites and spend a day in Greece without leaving the area. The Greek Festival at St. Barbara Greek Orthodox Church just north of University Parkway where Lockwood and Talavast Roads meet. Yasu! I just had a very educational ride with Nina. Did you learn anything? Where do I begin? So all this stuff goes into a safety check. Yep. It's a long list. It's important stuff. Test the smoke detector. Yep. Check the breaker box. Yep. Meter the GFCIs. Ground fault circuit interrupters. Why well, do that? <laughs> Call 888 Sparky. Nina, you make it look easy. Thanks, but don't do it yourself. Who's your guy? This is the story of a boy who was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where nothing could get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. It made him feel uncomfortable. One day, he found out he had something called autism. His family got him help. And slowly, he learned how to live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. We're losing exotic animals on a daily basis, and the ones that we have in captivity are really the ambassadors for their wild counterparts. I'm Clayton Roser from the Big Cat Habitat and Gulf Coast Sanctuary, housing over 150 exotic animals that needed a great home. And if you love animals, please help them. Do it locally. Support your local no-kill shelters, your local wild animal sanctuaries. Make a difference where you can. I'm Deshauna Barber. In 2016, I was proud to win the title of Miss USA. What makes me just as proud is my service in the US military. In the service, a soldier gains skills and learns values like discipline and leadership. That makes them an asset to any business that hires them. If you're an employer on behalf of Coalition to Salute America's Heroes, remember to hire smart and bet on a vet. Visit saluteheroes.org or call this number to learn more. 
Coming up, what's next is the House votes to keep the government funded. Plus, caught on camera, a DUI suspect does a cartwheel for cops in a field sobriety test. Charlotte County deputies make an arrest for several recent arsons. You are watching ABC 7 News at 1230. Our top story this half hour, lawmakers appear set to kick the can down the road once again. The House approved another short-term spending bill last night to fund most of the government through late March. Natasha Chen explains the elements at play to avoid another shutdown. Your United States government has been operating since October without a comprehensive budget. Instead, lawmakers have been voting on temporary spending bills. On this vote. Tuesday night, the House of Representatives approved the fifth one in a row. From here, this bill will go to the Senate. Senate leaders are expected to change it, and the House would have to vote on those changes before Thursday night to avoid another shutdown. Okay. Republicans place the blame on Democrats for the failure to reach a long-term agreement. I will remind you that the only reason we do not have a full budget agreement is because Democrats continue to hold funding for our government hostage on an unrelated issue. That issue is immigration, specifically an agreement to protect so-called dreamers from possible deportation. But instead of dealing with that issue this week... Leader McConnell pledged that we would have an open process next week, after this week, and what we're going to try to do is find a proposal. 20 or so senators have already been meeting daily, preparing for a future immigration deal. I'm not saying that we've come to a consensus yet, uh, but we're getting closer. Even so, President Trump is prepared for a future fight. Please. If we don't get rid of these loopholes where killers are allowed to come into our country and continue to kill gang members, if we don't change it, let's have a shutdown. We'll do a shutdown. Both houses of Congress appear to be working to avoid that outcome, both this week and beyond. In Washington, I'm Natasha Chen. Former Vice President Joe Biden says if he was President Trump's lawyer, he probably would not let special counsel Robert Mueller interview him. The comment comes after a New York Times report that claims Trump's attorneys are advising him against an interview. The president has said publicly he would be willing to sit for an interview under oath. But Biden says it would be easy for President Trump to perjure himself. One of the things that I, uh, I would worry about if I were his lawyer is him saying something that was just simply not true without him even planning to. Also took issue with the president and House Republicans releasing a classified memo alleging FBI abuses of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act. He called that move, quote, irresponsible. The Washington Post is reporting President Trump has ordered the Pentagon to plan a military parade like the one he witnessed in Paris for Bastille Day. The Pentagon's chief spokesperson said they are aware of the request and are in the process of determining specific details. The White House said President Trump is supportive of America's great service members who risk their lives to keep our country safe and says the president asked the Department of Defense to explore a celebration at which all Americans can show their, quote, appreciation. And Vice President Mike Pence will travel to South Korea to promote the administration's campaign of maximum pressure against North Korea as the South pursues a diplomatic opening to the Winter Olympics. Earlier today, the Vice President met with Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe in Tokyo to talk about the growing nuclear threat from North Korea. And South Korea says Kim Jong-un's sister will be part of North Korea's delegation for the upcoming Winter Olympics. Kim Yo-jong will be the first member of the ruling Kim family to visit South Korea. She's a close advisor to her brother and a powerful figure in the North Korean regime. Secretary of State Rex Tillerson will complete his trip across South America and Central America today in Kingston, Jamaica. That's where he'll meet with Jamaica's prime minister and foreign minister. Time now to get another check on the weather with meteorologist John Scalzi. And, uh, Nice day. We've got warmer weather this week, that's for sure. Absolutely true. Yeah. We sure do. Uh, well above average temperatures, mm -hmm. you know, it's in degrees above average. So uh, uh, kind of right in that temperature roller coaster a little bit, but so far I see no cold air in sight. So even though we have a series of fronts coming through, they're basically going to be just wind shifters and rain makers, not really anything right. in the way of any colder air coming our way. So I'm planting my tomatoes. <laughs> so yeah. I'm in. <laughs> we'll see what happens. <laughs> uh, so we're looking at some pretty quiet conditions across the uh, Florida Peninsula currently. No rain falling here, but.
You know what? Look a little bit further back to the west, and boy, that's not the case. There are plenty of showers and thunderstorms moving into parts of the panhandle right now, and some of them producing some pretty good rainfall. That's in our forecast tomorrow. We're looking at temperatures across the region, generally everywhere close to the 80 degree mark, in some instances above. Punta Gorda coming in at 83 degrees already. Sarasota coming in at 81, most every place else at uh, 79 degrees. We'll get up to about 83 officially at the airport today. Uh, we'll have a uh, little in the way of a rain chance here in downtown Sarasota uh, at the airport where the official records are taken. Maybe inland, well inland. Hardy, DeSoto, Highlands. You may see an isolated sprinkle or shower there, but that's about it. Overnight lows will probably be in the lower 60s, and we're watching very carefully the potential for some fog that may form toward tomorrow morning. Some of it could be thick. Again, mostly inland showers warm into the weekend. We'll cover those details coming up in just a few. John, thank you. Happening around the Sunshine State, another Florida Panther has been struck and killed by a vehicle. This is the seventh fatal collision this year out of seven total Panther deaths. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission says the remains of a four-month-old male were collected near Immokalee in Collier County. Less than 230 of these endangered panther Panthers are believed to remain in the wild. In Tallahassee, legislation moving at the Florida Capitol would remove the birthdays of Robert E. Lee and Jefferson Davis and Confederate Memorial Day as legal state holidays. The Senate Committee on Community Affairs voted to strike the three dates from the list of observed state holidays by a 4-2 to two vote. Though not officially celebrated, celebrated by any municipalities in the state, bill sponsor Lauren Book says there's no reason these dates should still be on the books at all. We must underscore diversity and undercut tributes that celebrate the Confederacy, which upheld the institution of slavery and perpetuated inequality and division in our country. This bill is just another stab in the back, an insult to our ancestors, my ancestors, many people's ancestors. It serves no purpose at all except humiliation. The hearing was the first of three committee stops for the measure before it can be heard by the full Senate. A similar bill filed in the House of Representatives has yet to be heard by any committee. Caught on camera, a Cape Coral man was arrested for his third DUI in three years after police say he placed an order at a McDonald's drive through before passing out behind the wheel. Officers, officers said they knew the suspect from an incident the night before where they had to take him home. He told police he had been drinking Chardonnay. He eventually agreed to a field sobriety test, but officers say he couldn't stay focused, even trying to do a cartwheel for officers. It failed. Officers found an unopened bottle of wine in his truck and placed him under arrest. An update now from the Sarasota Police Department, who are looking for help in an investigation into a fatal hit and run happening last month. Police say it happened in the 4,000 block of Fruitville Road on January 27th, and they've determined a Mazda 3 sedan between the year, uh, model years 2004 and 2009 was involved in the crash. The color of that vehicle is unknown, but the, the car should still have some right front end damage to it. Contact Sarasota Police if you have any information about that possible suspect or vehicle. New at noon, the Charlotte County Sheriff's Office making an arrest in a recent arson investigation. Brandon Wilson is now charged with arson, accused of setting structures on fire on Lorette Avenue Mayville Avenue and McManaway Avenue. Deputies say there was a strong odor of gasoline at each location. Charlotte County residents are encouraged to be on alert in their neighborhoods and to report any suspicious activity. Here in the Sun Coast, it will now be easier for bicyclists riding along the Legacy Trail to navigate toward downtown Venice. The city and a team of volunteers have installed Venice Connect wayfinding medallions. Riders can follow these areas for a safer route the city says the Venice Avenue Bridge does not have a bike lane or a widened sidewalk, so it can be dangerous for cyclists riding over the bridge. The wayfinding route is used as a tool to guide riders to shopping, parks, and other tourist attractions. South Sarasota County went north today for Leadership Englewood's annual tour of Sarasota County government. More than a dozen community leaders from the Englewood, Northport, and Venice areas spending the day talking to a variety of government officials. This morning, County Commissioner Paul Carajulo talked with the group. The group is also touring a county fire station and Nathan Benderson Park. Time to get back over to the kitchen and see how lunch is coming along with our culinary director, Judy Gallagher. Judy? 
Well, Scott, it's coming along really well. Now, I pulled out the green beans and the roasted shiitake mushrooms. The rest of the vegetables are in the oven for about 10 or 15 minutes longer. I'm going to also pull off one of these pork chops. You know, when I was at Geyer's Sausage Kitchen picking up these pork chops, some people stopped me and asked me about certain techniques with cooking and especially with pork. What I also explained is you can stick the pan right in the oven, just like you're doing with fish for those last few minutes, just to ensure that it comes up to a medium rare or medium. You don't want to cook it well done. But what you're going to do is, just like you're grilling outside, you poke it a little bit. Don't use the fork. You don't want the juices to run out. And you can feel whether it's just about cooked or not. This certainly is cooked, and they are thick and gorgeous chops. But if you needed five more minutes, in the oven it would go. So we're going to shut the oven off. We're going to pull the pan away from there. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this butter, and we're going to just let the butter melt down, and then we're going to take the blood oranges that are bright in season everywhere you go. So after Geyer's, I ran over to Yoder's Produce Market, and they had plenty of blood oranges. So I'm just going to get some of that delicious fresh juice, which I also think the blood orange adds such a nice flavor with the Moroccan seasoning that we put on these pork chops. I also just added some large chops. So just big pieces of some shallots and a little fresh thyme. So we'll get all the goodness from the bottom of the pan. I'll pull it off again. Let's go back and check on the vegetables. On the way, let's take a stop and look at our saffron risotto. Now again, this is just an easy fix. Plus, it's a lot less expensive than buying saffron threads. Just a few saffron threads can cost you up to $50. That's why they call it chef's gold. So look at this. The veggies are getting more tender, but they're not too soft. We want a little bit of crunch to them. And it's going to go really nicely with this saffron. So all we have left to do is pour our sauce over our chops. And then we'll just put down that side of saffron risotto in about five more minutes when it's complete and thickens. And we have a beautiful, hearty lunch or dinner for you. My name is Stefan Campagna. We're Ben Gates and Dramus. And here is your law tip of the week. If you've been injured in a car accident, the state of Florida only gives you a specific amount of time to file a claim. So act now, give us a call. Today, everyone is looking for more fashionable choices in flooring than ever before. And G. Freed has responded with a huge selection of carpets, tile, wood, laminate, and vinyl. Installed by a highly skilled team, G. Freed has got everything you're looking for and more. The next time you think about quality flooring, think G. Freed Flooring America. G. Freed Flooring America. Our world is at your feet. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7. Tide pods or any detergents uh, are an alkaline substance that can cause burns uh, that are pretty significant. Burns to the mouth, if it, you squirt it into your eye, it can cause burns to the surface of the eye kids eating pods as part of an internet challenge. What are they thinking? I'm Alan Cohn. There's a much safer challenge. Meet me at the trapezoid. Tonight on ABC 7 News at 7, your Suncoast News. We're here for you. It's me, Artie. Come see what I collected from the Creative Galaxy in my idea box. Transform your world. Will you help me make art? Each one of our journeys keeps us Before you throw it away. Hey, I have an idea. Think outside the box. We'll never get older. Each one Go be amazing. Give your cardboard box another life. Recycle. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Now your ABC7 First Alert weather forecast with meteorologist John Scalzi. 
So we look at an air temperature coming in at 81 degrees with a dew point value of 65. That's solidly spring like 65 and 81 with the dew point and temperature. Plenty of sunshine out there. South wind coming in at about 13 as well. That's kind of breezy. We'll look for that south wind to turn more southwesterly as we head into the afternoon. Warm and dry. Don't think we'll see any rainfall today in most locations across the sun coast. 83 we will call it as a daytime high at 3 p.m. 70 degrees by 7 o'clock this evening. And I think it should be a fairly starry overnight. And then toward dawn, we'll probably see a little bit of uh, fog begin to roll into the area. The potential for fog exists because winds are going to be shifting to the southwest. And when winds out of the southwest with these kinds of dew points roll in, why then we start to see some of that sea fog that's been forming but staying out in the Gulf be pushed a little bit closer to shore. So we'll see how that plays out tomorrow. Fog's a tough thing to forecast. We have a line of showers that really stretches the entire uh, breadth of the United States today from down east Maine all the way to the Louisiana Delta. That's all part of a frontal boundary, which is gradually going to sink southward in the low pressure area. The energy associated with this system will lift north away from the state of Florida. And as that happens, the energy for the system becomes less and less and as it moves through the state of Florida, it kind of just falls apart. There's really kind of lacking moisture as well aloft, so it doesn't have a lot to work with. And consequently, I think we'll see only a few isolated showers with this tomorrow, most likely in the afternoon. Warm afternoon, so despite the fact that we have this front sinking south, it's really not going to cool us down all that much. But again, in advance of that fog, as wind shift to the southwest, we'll watch for the potential tomorrow morning of some thick, thick fog. If you're traveling, the Atlanta airport, obviously a bullseye for some heavier shower and thunderstorm activity, perhaps even some in the vicinity of some severe weather a little bit later on this afternoon. So uh, there could be some airport delays because of that. None of that is going to be a problem for us, though, as that front sinks southward by the time it gets to the Big Bend region. It's going to have a hard time even producing showers, much less any kind of severe weather. Snow in the northeast, boy, and lots of it as well. Excess of a foot of snow in some isolated spots here indicated by these violet colors. A lot of places are going to see a foot of snow or six inches of snow in, in places. So uh, again, if you're traveling today to New York or Boston, there could be some airport delays there as well. Now the temperature trend with all of these fronts moving through certainly isn't bothered too much by the frontal boundaries. We stay with low temperatures that are in the 60s, despite the front that we, we have a front moving through on Thursday, we'll have a front moving through on Saturday, but they, they just really don't bother us all that much. So no cold air in sight. South wind coming in at about 5 to 10, switching to the southwest, pushing that sea fog closer to the coastline tomorrow morning perhaps. We'll look for 83 as a daytime high today, 81 tomorrow. A little bit more cloud cover, few showers in places, mostly inland, but they'll, they'll be spotty here and there around the area, I think. And then on Friday, we clear out just a little bit as that front pushes south and dissipates. Saturday, we cloud up a little bit. Sunday, we cloud up a lot, and I think we'll probably work in that chance of a shower at about 30% when the front stalls over us. It'll leave unsettled weather on Monday with a 50% chance of showers, and we'll wait for that to kind of wash away on Tuesday. Scott? John, thank you. In consumer news, now may be a good time to stock up on some toys. Toys R Us has won bankruptcy court approval to begin going out of business sales at 170 of its stores across the country. The company also won approval to close about 182 of its stores, but has since taken at least a dozen locations off that closing list. No word yet on when the going out of business sales will start, but uh, the remaining store here on the Sun Coast is not scheduled to close. Nearly 31 billion robocalls were made last year. That means that every one of us got about 100 of them. And while they can make you cringe, they might also make you uh, may also be worth some cash. The Federal Trade Commission has received so many complaints about the calls, its commissioner says it's the agency's top consumer protection priority. Until the government comes up with a solution to the problem, what can you do? Well, if you want to block a landline, a company called Nomo Robo will do it for free by putting your number on the Do Not Call registry. There's a new computer threat to be on the lookout for because it can cost you money. Virtual thieves are using a new form of malware spreading through software you probably already have on your computer, like Microsoft Office or even web browsers. 
Users see a pop-up warning them they need to update Flash or add a video plugin. But when they click on that pop-up, they're really downloading ransomware before the thieves demand payment. Right now, there's no fix for this kind of ransomware, so your best protection is to always keep your software updated. Still to come in your Suncoast News, why the writers of the Game of Thrones are taking on a new series of Star Wars films. Alex Karras Lincoln's 40th anniversary sale. Drive a brand new 2018 Lincoln MKC for $279 per month or the Lincoln MKZ for $299 per month. We have a great selection of certified pre-owned Lincolns. These vehicles have warranties up to 100,000 miles and come with complimentary roadside assistance. Alex Karras Lincoln, where our mission statement is consistent commitment. Every client, every time. Located two miles north of the Sarasota Bradenton Airport on US 41. So Matt told me to meet him at 7 a.m. sharp right here. It is now 7.01 a.m. You think Matt would leave without me? Hey, is Matt here? Uh, long con. Long con. Just missed him. Just missed him. All done. Mr. Sparky guarantees they're on time and the repair is free, so chop, chop. Call 888-8-SPARKY. Matt, you started without me. I finished without you, too. Are you a food lover, restaurant goer, or home cook? Then check out My Suncoast Dining on MySuncoast.com, your guide to the foodie lifestyle. ABC 7's own Chef Judy serves up her favorite recipes, cooking tips and trends, dining blogs, and helpful step-by-step -step videos. And you'll love the restaurant guide with direct links to your favorite Suncoast eateries. Whether you're cooking in or dining out, whet your appetite with tasty tips from Chef Judy at MySuncoast.com slash dining. Our nation's servicemen and women show great courage and leadership both on and off the battlefield. When they transition to civilian life, they can apply the skills and values they learned in the military to the workplace. That's why the Coalition to Salute America's Heroes is urging employers everywhere to be smart, bet on a vet. Hiring a veteran is also a great way to show your appreciation for them. To learn more, call 1-888-44-SALUTE. It's been about a month, and I can honestly say I've seen the change in me. I went from being a depressed girl who didn't want help to this happy, caring girl who loves helping other people. I just really hope that people that went through what I went through get the help that they need because their story is important and they are loved. Thank you so much for everything. For more than 100 years, American Humane Association has been teaching kids to be kind to animals. Those in our homes, on the farms, on the silver screen, and wildlife conservation caring for the world's vanishing creatures. But we can't do it alone. Visit kindness100.org to find ways to teach kids how they can make a more caring, compassionate, and humane world for all of us. Enjoy some of the best Suncoast restaurants on me. Just go to mysuncoast.com slash dining, sign up for the newsletter if you haven't already, and you can win a $50 gift card to a restaurant in our area. We'll pick a winner each week, so go on our website and sign up now. Absolutely wonderful, Judy. I, I love the root vegetables, and, and the meat is fantastic. You know, it's that mm. brining, and you do have to rinse it off so it doesn't taste too mm. salty, but you get that balance with the salt and sugar that break down some of the fibers in the pork that make it extra juicy. Mm -hmm. And then that finish with fresh blood orange juice mm. and a little butter that mm. mixed in with the shallots and all the roasted vegetables, and of course, the easiest, most affordable saffron risotto. And I got that along with the pork chops over at Geyer Sausage Kitchen. So, Absolutely you know, delicious. made it for like a, almost like a, a, well, I'll call it like two or three p.m. dinner, but mm -hmm. super easy. And roast vegetables, make enough for two or three days. They're delicious cold mm -hmm. on a salad. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. Well, it's delicious. The recipe's mm -hmm. on our website, mysuncoast.com. Click on the recipe button. 
It'll take you right there with Chef Judy's video instructions and That's the recipe right. list. And Fantastic. don't forget, it's Wednesday. You can always sign up for our culinary newsletter mm -hmm. if you haven't already. And if you have, you're going to be entered into a contest to win a $50 gift certificate to one of our restaurants on the dining page. Can't beat that. Free. Yeah. Scott. <laughs> In entertainment news, a YouTuber turned actor has been fired from his first movie. 20th Century Fox fired uh, Kyan Lawley after an updated, undated video surfaced of him making racist remarks about African Americans. Now, the film is an adaptation of a young adult novel called The Hate You Give, based on the Black Lives Matter movement. 20th Century Fox Films says it plans to recast the role and then reshoot scenes as needed. The YouTuber has since apologized for his comments. Plus, from Westeros to a galaxy far, far away, Game of Thrones creators D.B. Weiss and David Benioff are set to write and produce a new series of Star Wars films. The films will be separate from the main Skywalker Star Wars storyline and the new trilogy being developed by Last Jedi writer-director Ryan Wilk Johnson. No word yet on when the films are set to be released, but I'm hoping to see some dragons in them because they're so good in Game of Thrones. And Jumanji, Welcome to the Jungle has grossed more than $850 million worldwide, so you didn't need special skills to see this one coming. Sony is working on a sequel to the reboot. Two of the writers are in talks to work on the follow-up, which would bring back the director and the stars to the current hit movie. Did you see that one? I haven't seen it, no. no. Not the new one, no. My daughter saw it and loved it. She saw it really? Good. There's a lot of uh, humor in it, which makes it fun. Yeah. Good. Have a wonderful day ahead. We invite you back at 5 o'clock. See you then. At Tidewell Hospice, we know it's never too late to say thank you to our military veterans. The Tidewell Honors Veterans Program has provided care to more than 13,000 military families since 2008. Tidewell volunteers help honor veterans through special pinning ceremonies that demonstrate our appreciation for the freedom our veterans fought to defend. If you know a veteran, who can benefit from end-of-life care, call or visit Tidewell.org today. Tidewell Hospice, it's more than you think. They're coming from Tampa, Fort Myers, even Orlando. They're coming from everywhere for the Sarasota Ford Promise. Our promise means a new car you'll love. If not, return it for one you do. At Sarasota Ford, we promise live market pricing. We monitor national pricing on our entire inventory so you get the best deal. In fact, we guarantee it. Bring us any competitor's ad and we'll beat it by at least $1,000. That's why they're coming from everywhere to Sarasota Ford, where 41 meets 301. SarasotaFord.com. For the last decade, SNS Motorsports of Sarasota has built custom high-performance vehicles for demanding clients worldwide. They're now bringing their 50-plus years of combined build expertise to the parts business. SRQ Performance Parts is your one-stop shop for all your performance parts and accessories.